Joining us on set, fresh from announcing that massive, long-talked-about merger, the CEOs of T-Mobile, John Ledger, and the CEO of Sprint, Marcelo Claré. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Congratulations on this. Thank you. Uh, did you see this happening? Well, I'll let Marcel chime in, but uh, yeah, we've been obviously thinking about this for a long time. There's been gyrations as to, you know, whether it could get through from a price or governance standpoint. But one thing that was never confused, especially with Marcelo and I, is that these two companies made sense together. And the 5G aspects that are critical for the country and critical for us really was the flipping point as to this is the time and it makes great sense. All right, I'm going to, Marcel, is my bill going to go up? I mean, how could it not? Because in the end, competition, free market competition brings down prices. Ask him who his provider is before you tell him about his bill. His bill's going down because he's got the dumb and dumber. Which one? You never told me which one was dumber. AT&T has solidly moved into the dumber <laughs> row. Solidly all in. I mean, that, that egg they laid the other day? Come on. Let, go ahead, Marcel. Let me answer that, right? Uh, we've been very clear in this merger. What, this make, what makes this merger unique is we're set to build the world's most advanced 5G network. And the combination of our companies allow us to do that. And we've made a commitment that few people make, that we're actually going to offer the best product, best services at the lower prices. So we plan to make this market more competitive. You've seen two disruptive companies, T-Mobile and Sprint. Together, you know, if you think we're disruptive, together you can turbocharge that. All right, can you just make the promise right now? We all have an average bill. Can you just tell me right now, promise us that our bill will go down 20%. I wouldn't say 20 percent, but I will, I will promise you that we are always going to have the lower prices. Why don't you consult the new CEO of, of the company? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a promise yeah. right here. It would just be yeah. so good. I got this guy, Ajit. He's right now. He's right. he's tweeting about the uh, Jazz Fest in New Orleans. Could you just tell uh, right now? Could you please tell you us ready? the 25 percent decline? I won't say 25 percent, but I'll say services are going to be broadened. Prices are going to go down. Speeds are going to go up. The 5G capability is going to be beyond anything that the United States has ever seen before. Jobs are going to go up from day one, and both companies have more people than they did the day they were separate. And very importantly, Jim, the uncarrier, which is a fabric that uh, Sprint gained as well, uh, it's the competition in the United States. This is going to supercharge that, and what you're going to get with the network, higher speeds, lower prices, and I got news for you, dumb dumber, uh, Wi-Fi and son of Wi-Fi pipe, you know, our other big competitors. This is bad news for them. Here's something I wanted to tell you, Jeff. I've got two pieces I think is important. One is, today we want to talk a little bit to shareholders, because this deal is incredible, okay? So what you've got is a company when it comes together, pro forma revenue this year is 75 billion, service revenue is 55 to 57 billion, 22 to 23 billion year one of adjusted EBITDA, 40 to 42 percent EBITDA margins growing to 55 to 57. How about this? The company will have 2.9 times net debt leverage, but it'll be able to go down two turns by three to four years. And the reason is the cash flow is going to go from one to two billion to 20 uh, in 2022. It's going to be 10 to 11 billion. In 2025, this company is going to generate 16 to 18 billion dollars of free cash flow. Synergies, 43 billion, six billion dollar run rate. And of that, 93% are OPEX, 7% CAPEX. And so 26 billion are network synergies. So those are hard synergies, and we know how to do those. David, I'll give you a chance to join us and jump in here. Where is he? He's just All right. here. Yeah, thanks, oh. guys. My apologies for not my. <laughs> I'm in your ear. David, My apologies David, for not being been, there in we've person. been waiting to do this deal for so long, and the day we do it, you go off to Hollywood with the starlights. I mean, what's going on here? I know. I know. It's, uh, timing is everything in life, John, and mine has never been particularly good. Um, but yours, you're hoping, is good this time in terms of timing, and you make a compelling case, certainly from the business perspective. That $6 billion number, I mean, you know how long I've been covering deals. There's not many numbers I can remember being that right. large in terms of real synergies. It's a huge number. But back to yep. antitrust for a moment. You know, to those who would say, I get all the arguments you're making, but why change what's clearly working? And in this, I'm quoting Paul Gallant right. from Cowan this morning. Why change what's clearly working? You have single-handedly, some would say, helped drive down prices. You force yeah. Verizon and AT&T to go to unlimited. It's been working. Why screw with it? Okay, and you know what, David? This is the game that we put our helmets on to come play today. After we come here, meet with you guys, a couple of other stops that are not as relevant as CNBC, and all roads lead to Washington. Everybody's got an idea 
as to the, the preconceived notion of this deal. Here's what I say. I'll start yours first. Take that competition and supercharge it. You know, put it on faster speeds, bigger scale, bring lower prices. Take that, I, my commitment, Marcelo's commitment is if you like that competition before, you're gonna love what's coming with this one. Secondly, 5G is coming, and by the way, with all the hype that the United States has had around AT&T and Verizon's millimeter wave, we are behind. It's the early innovation cycle of 5G. We are behind China. This is not, this is not something we can allow. This will be the first company, because of our available spectrum, 600 megahertz, 2.5, to build a nationwide broad coverage 5G service. And guess what? CTIA says that the leadership in 5G can bring 3 million jobs, 275 billion of investment, and 500 billion of economic value. But we're behind. And by the way, what we also hope to do is get Dumb and Dumber and get Comcast and others to step up their investment. And we expect that they'll invest an extra 20 billion and we're going to invest 40 billion in the first three years. That's a story that Washington wants to hear. It's not about four to three, it's about zero to one. It's about supercharging the young carrier. It's about jobs. This deal will get approved because it's great for the United well, States. What do we do about the idea and think about President Trump? A lot of the commentary, I don't agree with it, is about bailing out a very rich, a billionaire Japanese man and also a billion dollar, much more than that, German company. So we have a German company that does very well. John, you actually still work for a company that's sure, I know, you sure don't seem it, but you are. And how about this soft bank, Marcelo? Our, isn't President Trump gonna say, we're not gonna bail out the Japanese, are you kidding me? Uh, this is not about bailing out. I mean, both SoftBank and Dutch Telecom have had a really good relationship with the U.S. government. We are, for, for a very long time, we're well-known entities. But I think most important, this is a vision that started in 2012. If you've been covering this for a while, and it was massive vision to combine these companies back in 2012, we waited for the right time, and the time is right. And uh, the time is right now. And the main reason for it is that the U.S. needs to lead on 5G. And the only way that you're able to build 5G is by combining Sprint and T-Mobile. AT&T cannot do it, Verizon cannot do it, the way we're going to build this 5G network. And what 5G is going to do, the amount of economic development that 5G will bring to the U.S., you're talking about $500 billion addition to the GDP, you're talking about the creation of 3 million jobs. Tell me, what else do you see today that has the ability to create 3 million jobs? There's nothing else. So therefore, we think this is good for America. We think this is good for consumers. We made it very clear we're going to lower prices, best product, best prices. And what, how many mergers do you know that we're making commitments that we're going to add tens of thousands of jobs in the first three years? This is a growth story in which the synergies make the synergies of this deal are more valuable than each company on a standalone basis. So we think this is an amazing deal for everybody around. Jim, I want to be clear. I work for Squawk on the street. Uh, you know, none of this Deutsche Telekom. I work, I work here. I've forgotten that. I've been a lot of and times I, I think I also about maybe you work you for T-Mobile, but that's maybe I'm being dumbest. Here's, yeah. a, here's another item. President Trump uh, does have some impact on this deal because tax reform has significantly increased the value of this deal. Tax reform has also given us the engine that we'll be able to use while we're investing to hypercharge this. And I would also say, if you think about agendas in Washington, leadership with China is risking taking the U.S. position in such a critical area. I think we're goal aligned from a political agenda. David? David's at uh, coffee break. Marcelo, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm here. I'm listening to every word. Marcelo, let me come to you for a second. You know, this is going to be a long regulatory review. I think you guys are targeting June of 2019 as potentially uh, getting to a close. What happens between now and then? We detailed the competition between the two of you, the trash talking that's gone on. How do you operate against the competitor while you're under this kind of regulatory review? And do you keep up the same level of spending, for example? You guys spend hundreds of millions of dollars on TV ads. Do you keep that up? Or do you back off during this regulatory review, obviously in the hope and expectation that you're going to be one company? No, no, we don't back off. As a matter of fact, even though we look our friends right now, beginning tomorrow we go back to competition. We're going to continue to attract T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon customers into the Sprint network. We are going to invest. This is going to be the largest investment in Sprint in terms of continuing to build our 5G network. So we're competitors, and we're going to continue to run the company the same way we have these last four years. We're going to continue to compete, and we're going to continue to win. And I think both companies are disruptors. 
and uh, you know we'll continue to run the company the same way we've been doing the last four years. But one thing, one thing's clear, David. You asked before, if would there ever be an opportunity for Marcelo and I to have Thanksgiving dinner together? And this year we will, and I will throw potatoes on him as I promised. <laughs> so that's uh, on, on that point. I want to talk about the relationship you two have had. This is a soundbite of John from August 18th. Take a listen. <laughs> Marcelo needs to wake up and realize that the mother of all customer loads is sitting in Verizon and AT&T. 77% of my customer ads come from those two. And I think he should focus on fixing his company and, you know, just copy paste everything I do and you'll be fine. <laughs> So how much of that was performance, and how much of that suggests that culture matches here? I, I, said, it, I said it to him on the way in, though. No. Hey, listen, I, amongst that, we have had, and we will, as Mar Marcelo said, a very competitive spirit. Um, we, uh, it's just who we are. Our companies are that. He and I are both that. But I will tell you, worst kept secret, unfortunately, is I like the guy. We, uh, I, I actually found out, as I said, if I was the, if I was tall, young, had a billion dollars, and owned a football team, we'd actually be the same person. But outside of those things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just closing his eyes. John. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, now, when I when I I, I have this I, when I look at this, I realize that you do check off a lot of boxes. I mean, it's very clear that what you want to do is you want to say, "There's no doubt about it. We're going to spend more on 5G. We're going to be able to do more rural. Be a lot of rural people are gonna, that you don't have to worry right, about yeah. any." about about antitrust because Comcast now adds more people than AT&T. Uh -huh. I want to know where does this money get spent? I mean, the tower companies right. are saying, woo, the commercial, the rate, you know, anybody in advertising, woo, where do we take the, where are these people going to be employed? Where are we going to get them? What are they going to be doing? Are they going to be telephone linemen? Right. I want to know where these jobs are going to be created. Yeah. Several, several things, Jim. The majority of the $40 billion that we will invest in the first three years is to take what will be 110,000 macro sites in this next network, right size them to 85,000 while increasing 10, hang the 2.5 network from a sprint on our towers and then ours on theirs and have an integrated network. So a lot of spending. Uh, rural America jobs, rural America stores, U.S. call centers expansion to create the capability. So there's a full plethora of places where we're going to spend this money. And I continue to believe it's going to cause the rest of the players to spend more too, which is going to be very good for America. And we look forward to telling this story every minute all day. John, John, it's David again. You know, I, I would assume if Verizon is listening to some of the talk that you've had over the last 24 hours in terms of their inability to deliver 5G, they're kind of wondering what you're talking yep. about. You know, they have tests in a lot of different markets. Perfect. They go up to Boston to check it out. They're spending billions and billions of dollars, and they're talking about this being commercially yep. available in the not too distant future. What am I missing David, here it, you in know, what I'm hearing is... from them and what you guys seem to be saying? I'm so happy that you read that question that I, I emailed you. I'm just kidding. Listen, here's the deal. You ready? Uh, I, I'm only going to give you one statoid. So what they're doing is they're building millimeter wave, very high band spectrum in small geographic areas to do fixed broadband replacement. OK, ready. Get your pencils out. If you use millimeter wave strategy to build a nationwide network, you need one site per thousand square yards, which means you mean six million sites at 250,000 per site, 1.5 trillion. Ain't gonna happen, okay? The only other alternative, because they don't have excess spectrum, because they're out, is they would need to kick their customers off of LTE, refarm, and go to 5G. So if this wasn't TV, I would say a word that they are, and they are F. They're, they're, they're hosed. They've got to do an about face. They've got to stop lying. They can't do small millimeter wave broadband replacement. And the best way for them to learn that is to watch somebody else help the United States gain leadership position and then come back in and spend that money that they're withering away somewhere else. Right, I'm struggling here. I'm struggling because I got a sprint every single corner. I got a sprint store and I got a T-Mobile store. Sprint. Uh, Marcel, come on. Your stores are going to close. Those people are going to get thrown out of their jobs. What are we going to do with them? Do you have ideas? Maybe we have a jobs program for that. Absolutely. I mean, we, what we're planning to do is we're going to choose where the best stores are. And then, and then the growth expansion of stores. Don't forget that we operate in certain parts of the country. The expansion is going to be nationwide. We plan to cover the same territory that Verizon and AT&T do with the new 5G network. So we plan to open hundreds and hundreds of new stores. So there's going to be rebalancing. But the whole idea is we have so 
much to choose from, but for every store that we close in, in, in an urban area, we plan to open the same in suburban areas. Okay, so, then other than the towers, where's the synergy? I mean, how do we, how do you save money so therefore our bills yeah. go down? Because, you know, that's okay. still a big factor. See, people don't want their bills to go higher. That's kind it's, of it's like all the people are writing it about. Of, of the, First of all, Jim, your bill couldn't go higher. I mean, you're paying so much, it's incredible. I, I can take a family plan. I can take it. Yeah, well, come on. Help those poor people. Help the military. Help the vets. Come over to T-Mobile. Listen, Jim, 26 billion of the 43 billion is from network. Site decommissioning and site avoidance, okay? Then you've got 11 billion of that. That is sales rationalization. It's back office rationalization. You've got 6 billion that is IT and spending, et cetera. Now, one of the things that we did, we announced that the new company is going to be called T-Mobile. Mobile. But what we didn't say yet, we own the brands Sprint, T-Mobile, Boost, Metro, Virgin. Okay, we haven't made decisions yet. That's an amazing brand portfolio. You ready for this? We have 127 million customers, 70 million postpaid branded customers, and 30 million prepaid. And by the way, that's 100 million branded customers. Uh, AT&T has 93 million. Welcome to the back of the bus, AT&T. So there's a lot to do, and as you know, anytime you have a job creation, some go up, some go down, there's a rationalization, but the net is an increase in opportunity. Here's, here's a statement from Verizon. Uh, we remain focused on providing customers with the most reliable 4G network, not just a proposal that may or may not happen in the next couple of years. They're gonna play up the uncertainty re regarding this, right? Yeah, is well, that not an inhibitor? Uh, yeah, to they're customer? on a spectrum, they need to buy dish, they're salivating that they would have done this. How about this? Did you see the results the other day? I mean, all I know is they lost customers, service revenue is declining, they're praying for this 5G way to maintain network leadership. And Carl, it's just not. It's like a millimeter wave broadband replacement. The application that you can use that for is instead of sitting on your couch and watching Netflix with your Comcast connection, you can sit on your couch and watch Netflix with your Verizon millimeter wave. Here's the deal. 5G will bring 100 times more capacity, 100 times faster speeds, 10 times the latency. This is where you get sub millisecond latency in autonomous cars and mobile VR and mobile AR. How's that going to work in one pipe in one geographic area? You need nationwide 5G and we're going to bring that to America. Where are we getting all this? Uh, I'd like to know because we have a lot of viewers who are, are getting the orders. What kind of uh, business is this? Uh, what kind of telco uh, American technology companies are going to do well for this? Because I, I have to believe that if you're going to do 5G, if you're going to spend like that, there, there are five companies that are going to do a heck of a lot better next year than they are now. So how yeah. about the names? Well, first of all, let's let I'm going to give you one other thing to think about. 4G, listen, Jim, in 4G with the U.S. leadership, that's what created Uber. That's what created Snapchat. That's what created Airbnb. That's what accelerated Amazon and Facebook and Google. So with 5G innovation, a whole new group of entrepreneurs are looking at what to do with the applications, where to put that network. That's a big piece. Obviously, from a traditional telco standpoint, there will be tremendous amounts of equipment. We're rationalizing the ones that we use. But the big winners, the big innovation cycles, are the people that are creating 5G applications, IoT uses, smart cities, smart agriculture that need this network that isn't here yet. So that's, uh, that's the big one. David? Uh, John, and I know we're going to get the opening bell in a minute. You know, you've spent uh, your career uh, deriding many of your competitors, and yet I hear you guys talking about the potential competitive threat from cable companies, namely our own Comcast, our parent, and Charter, and their MDNOs. Are they really a potential threat to you guys uh, in terms well, of providing wireless service? Oh, thank service? you. Thank you. <laughs> it's all for you, John. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, hey, I, hey, David. Before you answer it, yeah. let's get to the opening bell uh, and the S&P at the bottom of your screen of the big board today. Uh, it is principal global investors celebrating the launch of its investment grade corporate active ETF at the NASDAQ. It's New York Life Investment Management, a subsidiary of New York Life Insurance Company. All right, John, I'll let you continue. Okay, Jim, um, here's the story. In uh, Q1, Comcast added more postpaid phone customers than AT&T and Verizon combined. Last year, they added more than AT&T and Verizon combined, and analysts actually believe 
that Comcast and Charter could add five million customers in the next two years, and the NPV of the value of their wireless business is 20 billion, okay? Now, whether you believe it or not, how about this one? at and is the largest cable provider in the United States. Right, so there is an adjacent industry game that's going on, and it's not just wireless, it's not just cable. We want to play in all those spaces, and yes, Comcast is a viable player in this market, and they're ramping up. Charter's coming in. They're Charter. investing together. See that quarter? Charter's coming in. At son of Wi-Fi pipe. Hey, I saw their quarter. I saw Verizon's. I saw Comcast. We're going to announce ours this week. I, you know, I don't know. Maybe ours will be better. I mean, well, hey, John, I'm listening, I'm listening, and one of the things I've always loved about you is that you are the greatest salesperson in the world. And the second thing is you always ignore the lawyers. But you know what? In the <laughs> end, you're not going to be given the brief. I do not see you, particularly in that outfit, in front of any court saying, hey, listen, listen, chief, you know, like, hey, bud. And listen. you can't do that to them, and you can't trash talk the courts. Absolutely. Uh, I've written never trash talk. It's called telling the truth. Oh, uh, I okay. will tell you that this magenta t-shirt and these sneakers are going to be in the White House, they're going to be in the DOJ, they're going to be in the FCC in the next few days. I'm going to answer every single question about what they want to talk about because I've got the right story on our side. We're going to drive 5G that this country needs. We're going to save it from being behind China and others that could be a security threat, supercharge the young carrier, broaden the rural America opportunities, broadband opportunities, lower prices and more jobs. Talk about it any way you want. Shareholders are going to create huge value. This deal will be approved. It's going to take some time. But I'm going to be in there in my language, in my clothes, talking about what's good for well, the American but, consumer. But for the next, let's say it takes two years. Whatever. Two years. All right, 18 months. How many customers are you going to take from him in the next 18 months? How many do you intend to take from him? Because you are responsible okay. for 235% of the growth Listen, that we have had. As we say, we will both continue to run our companies, and I will tell you that our assessment of the synergies of this company assumes the potential losses that take place look, about each needing to invest. If you look at mainly the last 12 quarters of growth, there's two companies that have mainly been taking market share away that normally that we have positive hands in it at, and it's always been T-Mobile and Sprint, and that's not going to change. You see two disruptive forces. A lot of people forget that if we go back a year back, AT&T and Verizon used to basically have tons of rate plan charging overages. We launched Unlimited first. With T-Mobile, I think they launched a couple of days later. And then we basically changed the U.S. landscape forever. Every single American today just can sign up to a rate plan called Unlimited. No other country has that. Overages are gone. So what you saw happen in the disruption that we did in Unlimited, how we disrupted the U.S. market, we're going to continue to do that as two split and separate companies. Now, when you put us together, then you can turbocharge that. Then you can see the same disruptors offering a better product, lower prices, at the same time attracting new jobs. Okay, Carl and Jim, one, um, one more important Marcelo. thing, okay? So wait, David, because I need you too. So we will get this yeah. deal approved. I know what to tell the regulators, what they need to hear, all right? Shareholders will accrete value. My big question to the three of you is on the day we close and create the new T-Mobile, can I have each of the three of you as new customers? Yes or no? <laughs> I mean, you're a partner David, in the show. <laughs> Come on. Wait. Sure. What, whatever you need. There you go. There's a yes. Yeah. Jim? Uh, uh, in? Carl? No, no, no. I'm not going to. Are you kidding me? What? Okay. On the flip side, I, hold though. Hold on. I want to point it, out. That means we have 67% market share in the new T-Mobile. On the flip side, if it yeah. is turned down on regulatory grounds, what then? What's the plan then? You can assume that before we enter into a transaction like this, we've studied what is the poster child of a merger. What are regulators looking for? That you're going to bring more competition to the marketplace. Check. Better product, better prices. Doesn't get much better than this. Secondly, the U.S. needs leadership on 5G, period. We cannot fall back to China and South Korea. 4G is what drove the innovation of all the OTTs. 5G is going to drive a whole new wave. People say that the emergence of 5G is what color TV did to black and white TV. And we cannot afford to fall behind. Third big question is jobs. This company is about growth. So when you bring better products, better prices, more jobs, this is a poster child. This is how every merger should look like. So we feel very confident. You can rest assured that we've done a lot of studying before we enter into a transaction like this. We have not talked to the government yet, but we feel quite good that we have a very compelling proposition. I'm seeing yellow. Um, David? Yeah. Gu guys, um, uh, by the way, now I'm very concerned, I'm sure everybody is. I wasn't thinking about it yesterday, but now 5G in China, man, it's all I'm going to think about us falling behind. Wow. But, um, why we're Marcelo, here, what happens, 
Yeah, what happens to the 27% stake that SoftBank has? What is the intention there uh, from you and Moss's son in terms of your commitment to maintaining that stake in this combined company? Will it be years? Or when you see the opportunity to potentially put up a win in terms of the investment and the return from it over these years, will you start selling stock? No, no, we're committed. I mean, we have a lockup in the stock of four years, and we did that on purpose. This one, Massa's original vision to put T-Mobile and Sprint together. And you've, you follow the vision fund. You follow all the investments that we're doing, and all these companies need a really powerful, the world's best 5G network. I'm looking forward to finding synergy between our different portfolio companies that we have at SoftBank and combining it with the new company. So we're in it for the long term. We basically roll all of our equity. And this is a significant equity. I mean, it's, it's $25 billion of investment that when you add the synergies, we expect this to grow. And, you know, we've put the faith in the hands of John and Mike, and we feel very good about it. So we're in it for a very long yeah. term, and this will be one of the primary investments of SoftBank. All right, well, John, I, I need to have a commitment from you right now that there'll be more people working for these, when you combine, for these two companies, there'll be more people. There'll be more spending, and my bill goes lower. I'm still not hearing from you that these will all occur. Bye. My name is John. I would like to commit to you, Jim, that there will be more people employed from day one than both companies combined. Prices for consumers will go down. Prices for competitive people like you will go way down. And we will invest $40 billion in this new company in the next three years. And we will drive the innovation that this country needs and drive others to come forward. We're going to save that tape. I am. Yep. You, what are you swearing on? A, a, a bottle of, uh, you know, of on water? A television set. Now go forth and multiply. <laughs> Don't make this there you go. I mean, hey, you know, you spent your time on a cross stick. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, thank you for your thank time. You. Thank Good you. to see you. Come back Good soon. You. We'll do it. Uh, Marcelo Clare and John Ledger. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.